The National Weather Service confirms it was an EF3 tornado that caused the damage in St. Louis. Today, storm survey teams are still in town completing their work. But what goes into that work and how exactly do they know the wind speeds without measuring them? Weather Impact Meteorologist Gary Frank explains. An active severe weather season has culminated most recently with EF3 tornado damage in St. Louis. The track was nearly 23 miles long, the tornado was nearly one mile wide, and the maximum wind speeds were 152 miles per hour. But how do we know all these things? After every storm, in conjunction with your reports, pictures, videos, and the radar data, National Weather Service meteorologists survey the damage caused by the tornado. This is done in conjunction with the enhanced Fujita scale, which accounts for the quality of building construction when surveying the wind damage. Well, as the National Weather Service continues to survey things, not everywhere are you going to be able to see what the wind speed was, especially in these North City neighborhoods. So you look at roof damage, even as simple as shingles, or diameters of tree branches, larger tree branches, how thick they are, obviously full trees, and even semi trucks and full houses. That's the way the National Weather Service is going to continue to survey these things every time. And that's how we can estimate the wind speed in your local neighborhood. There are 28 damage indicators, including one and two family homes, manufactured homes, motels, schools, small businesses, and even trees. Each one of these damage indicators has a specific description of the typical construction of each indicator. For example, if a house has vinyl or metal siding, or if a house is made of brick or wood, these things all correspond to different levels of damage. So in addition to being experts about weather, the National Weather Service survey team must know a little bit about construction as well. So if glass on windows or doors were broken on someone's house, the expected wind speed would be 96 miles per hour. But there's both a low end and high end wind speed assigned to each one of these categories also. The low end in this case being 79 miles per hour and the high end being 114. As the construction of the building is determined, the wind speed is determined as well and then assigned a rating on the EF scale. Then you'll see these damage points that are surveyed on the map that we share with you. Each one of these damage points is correlated with a different level of EF damage rating depending on what structures are impacted. That's why the storm rating is lower as it started in Clayton, increased as it moved northeast into Forest Park and Bolivar, and reached maximum intensity as it entered the Kingsway and O'Fallon neighborhoods. I'm weather impact meteorologist Gary Frank.